We mentioned that there are two issues, two enhancements. Therefore, we'll provide to this matrix H. The first one goes back to the problem we just briefly alluded to. That what if a node, say node four here, does not point to any other nodes? It's got in degree of three, but out degree of zero. So O four is zero. Then what? Well, you can't divide by zero, and this presents a conceptual and mathematical、uh, challenge. For example, in this four-node、uh, small graph, we can write down the H matrix four by four very easily. The first node points to the fourth node only, so it's zero, 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 one. The second node points to nodes one, three, and four, so out degree is three. And on columns one, three, and four, we write down one over three, one over three, one over three. No self loop. That's zero. Node three is one over three, one over three, zero, one over three. So far, so good. Node four, that's the problematic one. It's all zero. So if we solve the linear equation associated with this pi transpose equals pi transpose h, that means we have to solve the following equations: one over three times pi two plus pi three equals Pi one, okay, and that's just because this is the first column of、uh, matrix H, and then we have one over three pi three equals pi two, one over three pi two equals pi three, and pi one plus one over three pi two plus pi three. Equals pi four. If you look at this system of four linear equations, the only solution is that all pi's are zero. Okay, so how can we solve this dangling node problem? We refer to these nodes with no out degrees or out degree being zero as dangling nodes. One possible solution is to say, well, since you don't point to any other nodes, I will assume that you point to all nodes. I will force you. Through a mandatory score spreading, you have to spread your important score. And since you don't tell me which ones you point to, I'm going to say you point to all nodes. Okay. Either all the n minus one nodes, or for simplest, let's say all, all the n nodes, including yourself, with a self loop. For example, in the last graph here, instead of this zero 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 zero. We'll say it must be one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. Now here's a shorthand notation to denote this action of forced importance score spreading to all the nodes. What we saw is that we basically say that there is one over four times one 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 one. Okay, this is a vector of ones. So we write it as a boldface one, a vector one.、Uh, since by convention of this research field, I have to flip it over. So this is、uh, a row, a vector. Okay. So it's one over n. That's one fourth here times a row vector of all the ones. Okay. That's what we want to use. But only for the dangling nodes. So how we have to identify the dangling nodes? In this case. The dangling node with a binary indicator is the last one, the fourth node. So we write down one here in a four by one vector. It's the indicator of all the dangling nodes. If nodes one, two, and three are not dangling, dangling nodes, we just write down zero. If it is dangling node, we write down one. And now we can look at an outer product between this column vector and this row vector. Okay, usually, when we write down two vectors multiplying a transpose b, we mean inner product. Okay, so this column vector flipped, therefore it's one by n, and b is n by one column vector. So the inner product is a scalar, one by one. But in this case, we're talking about a column vector producting with a row vector, not the other way around. So we actually end up with a four by four matrix. It's a little funny operation, but soon you get used to this shorthand notation. In this four by four matrix, the first entry is simply this times this. 
So that zero times one was still zero. And then you can see that this whole thing would be zero. Similarly, the second row is all zero. Third row, all zero. That's because in this outer product, uh, the indicator vectors, first three entries are all zero. So it doesn't matter what you have over there. The last one is one times one fourth, one times one fourth, and so on. So you've got exactly what you want. Again, this is just a shorthand matrix notation. And we call this indicator function uh, vector w. This vector is just one. So we have w multiply one transpose. And don't forget to normalize by the number of web pages, one over n. In other words, we're adding to the H matrix another matrix, one over n scalar times w indicator function and one transpose. Just to add an error to indicate these are vectors. This is the matrix we just talked about. It represents the topology. This is an artificially added matrix. We add to this H. What this addition does is exactly take out all those all zero rows and substitute with one over n over there. Again, the notation may take a little getting used to, but once that's done, you can easily see what's going on here. Now, H is a very big matrix, and this is also a very big matrix, but this actually is a simple matrix. Forget about the scaling. This is basically saying I'm just putting down a bunch of ones in certain rows, those rows that are indicated as dangling nodes. And this in particular is called a rank one matrix. So we're adding a rank one matrix here, which is simply a duplication of one, 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 one vectors to a very large but sparse matrix H. So sparsity helps and this low rank also helps because we can see the structures embedded in this large matrix. We call this new matrix, our second matrix, give it a symbol H hat. And we can model this as so-called random walk on a graph. Why? Because once we've done this, there will be no rows that are all zeros. And by this normalization, we know all the rows will add up to one. So in the H hat matrix, we can view each row as a probability distribution. It says if you're on a certain page, what's the chance that you'll be going to the other pages? Well, if there are hyperlinks, then you'll be evenly likely to go to any of the hyperlinked pages. If there is none, then you'll be evenly likely to just terminate this and hop to any of the pages out there. Now, is this a reasonable model? Is random walk on graph a reasonable model? What well, depends on what you're trying to model? If you try to model a lot of things, the so-called follows a Markov chain structure, then sometimes it's pretty good. And in the case of navigating on the web, clearly people don't exactly do uh, uniformly picking one of the hyperlinked text. It's a gross simplification. But nonetheless, this random walk on graph following this particular structure represented by H hat matrix turns out to be a reasonable trade-off between uh, realism and tractability.